Hello, I am here at Sports Beach in Cannes. I'm with Craig Elamelia, who is the Chief Creative Officer of Code and Theory. So, firstly, thank you for having us here. Uh, thank you for coming. I it's uh, it's it's a, a remarkable place, and we've been getting thousands of people coming through, and the more, the merrier. Yeah, I mean, do you know what? Last year it was big, but this year it's like, have you doubled the size? Doubled. Doubled. Oh, you show off, you. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. And, you know, I'm sure as well as your beach, obviously people are descending here. I've seen massive queues along the Cosette. But of course, we're here for the work as well, mm -hmm. because it wouldn't be can without the inspiration. Mm -hmm. So is there anything <clears throat> that's caught your eye that you can think, do you know what? I wish I had done that. There is. Um, I don't know how widely known it is, but I saw a piece of work from McDonald's in Japan. It was called No Smiles. And I thought it was just a tremendously well-coordinated piece of work across every single channel. Um, the premise was that um, in Japan, um, at McDonald's, you're meant to have you're meant to smile, and every every interaction is with a smile. The insight was millennials don't really like to smile, and just because they don't like to smile doesn't mean they're not happy. <laughs> and so um, I guess the equivalent of Taylor's, I don't know the artist's name, but I guess like the equivalent of Taylor Swift in Japan, like this big, big papa. She made a music video in McDonald's talking to herself about why she doesn't smile. And I just thought it was such a, and so in the end, the idea was um, McDonald's changed their policy from always smile to bring your style to allow people who work there to just be themselves and their authentic selves. And it was just executed flawlessly across every single channel. It was big TV spot, beautiful a music video, a top of the char chart song, uh, social content. I was really jealous. I, like I was so jealous of every part of that campaign. Yeah. Oh, you've left me on a cliffhanger. So why doesn't she smile? Because she's a millennial. Oh, okay. That, right. so and and so and and and. and she, Millennials don't smile, apparently, and that it's just the insight. Just because. Just because. Wow, that explains a lot, doesn't it? I just thought it was such a human story that was yeah. executed in such a profound way, and the potency of the idea really managed to sort of permeate across every single channel without losing the idea, you know, and that's so important. I think when we see work at Cannes, oftentimes you're only seeing a small part of an idea and you're not really, for me, I I really appreciate the, the sort of the strategery around executing a single thing across many things and making sure that it's not necessarily matching luggage, but that the expression of the idea in the particular channel is unique up unto itself, but continues to tell the story in a really strong way. And that's that's how I nerd out. That's how I look at work. <laughs> oh, no, it does sound amazing. Well, let's see how it fares in the results yeah. shortly. And so, you know, you, you talk about this kind of storytelling and the evolution of the idea yeah. and really sort of, I guess, loving the craft. Yeah. So when it comes to things like AI, yeah. I mean, obviously there's no agenda this year without AI on it. No. So where, what's your take on that? How are you using it? Yeah, that? so um, in the drum, in 2016 or 17, I wrote an article this was before the whole big AI boom. And, I, and the name of the article is The Argument for Augmented Intelligence, not Artificial Intelligence. I don't think there's anything artificial about AI whatsoever. I do believe it is augmentative. It, it's also an accelerant. And um, AI is changing everything. It's changing the whole game. Um, it's changing the way we approach work the way we execute work, the way we connect work, and it also is changing the way we connect with our clients and our relationships. I think typically the most stressful part of a relationship between an agency and a client is the speed in which you execute against a brief because there's a lot of tension there. You're never sure if. And what AI allows us to do is get there quicker, right? And I don't think there's anything wrong with the ability to get to an idea quicker and then craft it. And then you have the time to really align and mm -hmm. connect so that when you launch it, 
you don't have people standing there going, that's not what I asked for. Yeah. Um, it's great. I, 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 I think AI is going to be the greatest creative tool we've ever, we've, we've ever had. Yeah, I mean, well, it's amazing that you predicted that all, all those years ago. I remember once we produced a, a magazine, but the time when we had a magazine, and it was made by AI. So mm. it was IBM Watson who created this I magazine. That. And it was just really cool. But years ago, it just sort of, people liked it, but I don't think they really got it. Right. And so the same as your article, and now that people are like, they're lapping it up, and it's all everyone's talking about. Right. And so when it comes to that, you know, you're obviously very, you know, immersive in this, you're really on board with it. What does that mean for like the skill set? So, you know, if you've got yeah. new talent coming in or even people already in the agency, yeah. like how are they having to adapt or what kind of skills do they need now? Um, look, you, creativity and taste <laughs> will always be an amazing skill to have. And, and in my opinion, will always be a, a differentiator for anything. Creativity is, is the great differentiator. Um, from a skills perspective, I do believe that we're moving away from having to push pixels um, and write copy to how do you think about data and then how do you think about crafting data or using data as your clay for generating images or generating text or generating video. Um, so it's really having a deep understanding in sort of the atomic particles of what makes up an idea or what makes up a concept or what makes up a piece of work and thinking about it from a very data-centric standpoint because ultimately data is going to feed everything and start to become the thing in which we're molding into beautiful expressions. Um, so not math, I don't, I don't think anyone needs to know math, <laughs> but I would say a, a really strong understanding of how to look at data, how to work with data, how to manipulate data, um, and, and then on top of that, be talented and be able to tell a story, craft a story. Um, but I do think that the sort of the hard skills that um, we typically look at are probably less becoming less and less important, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head, don't you? So it's, ta it's all about talent at the end of the day. Yeah. You're good or you're not. Exactly. And it's about, I think, being a bit smarter in how you finesse the, the numbers um, and, and what you do, you know, how you interpret that. Yeah. And so talking about talent, yeah. so obviously you're well-versed, you're, you're, you're very prolific in your field and your craft. So I would love to know from your career to date, what do you think has been the single piece of work or campaign that you have produced that you're, you would say you're the most proud of? Mm, that's a really good question. I get asked that question often and I have six kids, so <laughs> it's it's almost like having to, it's almost like asking me which one of my kids I love most. Okay, but that's the next question. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I actually, I actually um, produced a piece of work this past year for the Super Bowl that I am, am extremely proud of. It was a Super Bowl spot for Cetaphil. And the idea was that this year, because the Kansas City Chiefs and Travis Kelsey were in the Super Bowl, was gonna be the first year both dads and daughters, because of Taylor Swift, would be really interested in watching the game. So I thought, what a wonderful opportunity to bring dads and daughters together, especially for a skincare company that wants more male <laughs> customers. Um, but what a wonderful insight, you know, dads and daughters, and it's such a beautiful relationship, especially around football where dads are kind of absent, you know, kind of like off to the, you know, they're watching the game. And so, um, we did this Super Bowl spot literally within a week. We had one week to do it. Um, and it got so much press and so much, so many social comments about dads and daughters crying, calling each other. And it was such a, I cried from, what, from reading social comments because literally people were like, I never, I, I called my dad. I called my daughter, we reached out, we we're watching the game together. 
I mean, that's why, you know, that you hope that, that, that your work can have an effect on people on such a personal, real human level. And I've done a lot of cool shit. I've done a lot of really good work. Um, but to me, I think that represented um, something that added to the world in a really positive way and, and in a very unexpected way. And we were able to get, you know, as much share of voice on the day as any other commercial, you know, it was just one of those wonderful, um, wonderful things when things came together at the right place at the right time, the right idea, the right opportunity. And um, yeah. Yeah. Wow, I mean, humanizing, you know, the work, it just, you know, I mean, it feeds into everything that we've been taught. It's yeah. all about human nature. It's We're human beings at the end of the totally. day. And talking about human beings, sex, human beings, you've got six kids. I How do. do you even cope with work? I have to work. <laughs> <laughs> I have to work. I have to feed them. Um, you know, they keep me young. My kids are involved in everything that I do. They want to see pitch decks, they want to see concepts, they want to see executions. When I put something out into the world, they're excited. They go to school and like, my dad made this. Um, as a matter of fact, my oldest daughter works for VML. She works for VML. Um, so uh, it's, it's in the family. It is. Well, you're mentoring them every day. So, but thank you so much for this. It's been brilliant to catch up. And I'm just, I've just, but when I've been talking to you, I see people climbing that wall. You're going to have a turn in a minute. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you.